Let's go on to our final topic of the day, Mr. Fantasia. It's this TV show, and it's a lot stranger than you'd think. Hey, Stranger Things. Season four is hitting uh, Netflix in May. Part one. Part two is coming out in July. And accompanying that release date, Andrew, there is a, a little letter that they, they wrote. I don't know if you had a chance to read this letter or not. And I, have, I did not. No. I, well, I, you can read it right now. I'm not going to read it all. But the last paragraph, they kind of go into uh, there are still. Me- so anyway, basically, it, it ends in season five. They're going to do two part season four. And then it's going to end in, uh, in would, season five. Would you like me to the last read this for the people watching? Why not? Yeah, sure. I think Mr. Rez and Jennifer and Vermont are like, we we came here to hear Andrew read, so why not? All right, that's what I do. Okay, here we go. Hi, nerds. Do you copy? It's been a little while. With nine scripts, over 800 pages, almost two years of filming, thousands of visual effect shots, and a runtime nearly twice the length of any previous season, Stranger Things 4 was the most challenging season yet, but also the most rewarding one. Everyone involved is incredibly proud of the results, and we can't wait to share it with you. Given the unprecedented length and to get it to you as soon as possible, season four will be released in two volumes. Volume one will release on May 27th. Volume two will release five weeks later on July 1st. So that's the good news. It's coming soon, and it's bigger than ever. It's also the beginning of the end. Seven years ago, we planned out the complete story arc for Stranger Things. At the time, we predicted the story would last four to five seasons. It proved too large to tell in four, but as you'll soon see for yourselves, we are now hurtling toward our finale. Season four will be the penultimate season. Season five will be the last. There are still many more exciting stories to tell within the world of Stranger Things, new mysteries, new adventures, new unexpected heroes. But first, we hope that you stay with us as we finish this tale of a powerful girl named Eleven and her brave friends, of a broken police chief and a ferocious mom, of a small town called Hawkins, and an alternate dimension known only as the Upside Down. As always, we are grateful for your patience and support. Over and out, Matt and Ross. Uh, wow. Over I, and out. I love when they when showrunners kind of spell this out and tell you sort of where the GPS is pointing. And man, these posters, have you seen the four of them together? The way they're... Yes. Yeah, that, that yeah is I almost beautiful. used that one, but... Oh, yeah, gorgeous. I can't gorgeous. I love this show. This is one of the, the one of the few Netflix shows that I always look forward to. I, I remember the first time I saw the trailer. I'm glad it's coming to an end, though. For for a few reasons, one, everything runs its course, and two, the kids are no longer kids. I think um, uh, Millie Bobby Brown just turned like eighteen, or she's about to like that's an adult now. So now the the yeah. kids aren't going to be riding their little tricycles around town anymore, and then suddenly that stops being cute, and you're like, wow, well, <laughs> you're an adult now. I don't, uh, you know, your adventure's not that much fun. <laughs> so I don't know how it's going to go, but I love that they I love that they mapped this out years ago that they always had this plan. So there's a few points to this, Andrew, but. The main point, the first point we're going to get into is they're breaking up season four into two halves. Are you a, a fan of this? They did this. We saw this. Netflix has done this a few times. HBO, I believe, was the first one to really do this. Are you a fan of splitting these series up into halves? Yeah, they did that with like Arrested Development as well and a couple other things. I, I'm i neither a fan nor do I hate it. I think it's fine. Um, I feel like thanks to stuff like the Mandalorian now I'm just really I, my heart lives in the world of just release it weekly so that I have something to look forward to every week um, because I, like I go back to the mistake that I made last year when Cobra Kai season three came out and I watched it all in 12 hours and I should not have done that <laughs> it was not a smart thing to do and I feel like I'm gonna be so excited for this that when it comes out, I'm going to be tempted to do the same. But now he's talking about, or rather not he, they, because the, there's the Duffer brothers, not Duffer singular here. But they're talking about how there's nine scripts, um, but that it's also longer. Okay, so there's so there'll be, I, I'm confused by that. Nine scripts for the whole season, but they're splitting it up. So I think what they're trying to tell us is that the episodes themselves are longer. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Yeah, so if we have like episodes that are, I don't know, 80, 85 minutes each, then you're looking at a substantially increased runtime like they're promising. Uh, so yeah, then that makes sense to stagger it a bit so it's not overwhelming. 
And I bet you any money, they just have a really cool midpoint thing going on in the story and they want to give people time to savor that. So why not? And it totally works with subscription-based programming where they're like, oh, you, you're going to want to stick around till July to do this. And it's not like, it, you know, it's two months. That's pretty good. I didn't like He-Man going six, five, six months, whatever it was. Like, yeah, that, that was, was weird. I, it was ridiculous. And then and then that show, I don't know, it did, that show didn't stick for me. So, you know, whatever. But it, it was it was too long of a gap also. It just, it was... By the time part two came, I was over it anyway. So I think two, I, not that I would be over Stranger Things because I've been so invested for 400 years now since the first one came out. But I think, I don't know. I, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm okay with the split. It's always weird to me when they split these things. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's on Netflix and they drop them all at once and it is one big giant movie essentially. It's going to probably take me the entire two months to watch all four, five, four or five episodes from part one also. Oh, and your your buddy in crime here has just joined the chat. We should have had him on for our She-Hulk talk. Mr. Ryan J. Whitehead, yes. Uh, he's right, yeah. It looks like there might be two arcs, uh, and they need the extra time to cover it. Because you're right, Ryan, because you have Hawkins and you have Russia. It looks like there's a lot of stuff going on in Russia. Yeah. So. Yeah, they've expanded over to Russia. There's a lot going on. He is right about that. But they're also wrapping it up, right? So it's yes. going to be like arc, arc, but also you've got to figure that they're planting the seeds, the seeds to uh, to get us to the ending. And Disney Desi has joined us in the chat as well. Hello, Bright, Bright Suns. Suns. That's uh, uh, that's a good day in Hondo, apparently. <laughs> so what that is. Also, Andrew, though, the other thing that they're mentioning out here is there are still more exciting stories to tell within the world of Stranger Things. I mentioned to you a few years ago that I walked into a, a chapters Indigo, whatever it was, and there were Stranger Things novelizations, and you were very excited. You went, oh, that means the world is growing and expanding and there's more to tell. Are you excited for the possibilities of, of this version of Stranger Things ending, but spinoffs coming up? Based on what we have in the three seasons so far, I might say no. But if they give if four and five give us other things to explore that I would be interested in exploring, then yeah, I could, because right now as it stands, all we have is one town with one portal to one place and all the monsters in that place all look the same. So uh, the world building to me doesn't have a whole lot of variety to it, but you know, if, if this opens up, if these seasons open up this world in a really big way, then I could get behind the idea of this being, you know, a thing. Uh, like if, let's say season five ends with uh, the world kind of going, not like post-apocalyptic, but the world kind of goes a Jurassic World 3 route where it's like, hey, we have dummy gorgons everywhere now. We just have to live with that and you know, shield ourselves from these things. And we do some kind of spinoff where we jump ahead in the future and we follow this new group of people who are just dealing with living in this world. And hey, along comes these adult characters who are the original kids from Hawkins and they they know the score. They've been around the block and it's like this version of Ghostbusters Afterlife just with them. That kind of thing, maybe I could get behind. Um, But right now it's a very contained thing to me the story is super contained to hawkins to the upside down and i haven't seen enough variety to make me want to say i'm gonna read books and spin off comics till i can't see straight because it's not that kind of story yet i i'm kind of i'm with you but my big thing is because you just said in the future and it's just the story works so well because of the 80s Yes. Right. Like what we just said about Ninja Turtles, how you like, you know, if the Ninja Turtles could keep New York in that era, it, it, this show is so dependent on 1985 or whatever it is, right? It's dependent on that era. It's dependent on kids on bikes going outside, no cell phones, no this or that. My feeling is that there is a lot they can do because while this is an isolated story and we only know what's going on right now, they're expanding to Russia clearly from what we've seen. There could be other instances happening elsewhere. And also 11 is number 11. They try, I mean, they did try to do that 
one episode, the Mandalorian episode in season two, where she goes off and visits her friends um, or her sister. Remember, was was she number 12 or eight or something like that? And yeah. I didn't mind. I didn't mind that episode so much, but it, it, people could not stand that episode. And I think that was their first attempt at at spinoffs was with that one. And I, I think there is a lot they can do in the spinoff. I'm with you. I don't think we've we've been introduced to enough of it, or we haven't been introduced to anything that would make me feel very excited about it right now. Other than the fact that I like Stranger Things and I like this world, and if it ends, I would be willing to continue on. I do think, though, if you're going to spin it off, you do it now. You do it sooner than later. You do it before season five. You do it before the show ends. You give it to me now. You don't let it end, right? You do the Book of Boba Fett in the middle of The Mandalorian. You don't do it at the end. You do it now. Give it to me now. Give me a reason. You know, tease me with it. Be like, okay, you're going to get season five, but first we're going to give you this show, and that's that's what would get me on board more with it because, again, if they do a spinoff, Andrew, and it doesn't look as great as stranger things or you know it doesn't follow kids it's not the goonies with demons maybe i'm not as invested in it and if you give it to me after i might stay away but if you give it to me in the middle i might go to it gravitate to it just to cling on a little bit longer maybe yeah you're right the 80s does make a huge world of difference um yeah you're right ryan maybe give it a break get let time kind of heal all the wounds and then let people get hungry for it again um but i feel like i remember the problem when... is streaming i was just saying streaming the problem with streaming is it doesn't it doesn't want you to take time <laughs> it wants you to keep paying for it so that's... they're gonna be like here's stranger things seven and eight and nine, and here's stranger 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 things that's how that's how they work right they want they want to get you on that's the problem is story Sorry, Andrew, story comes second, right? Story comes second. Your your sixteen dollars a month comes first. <laughs> oh, unfortunately. One day we'll live in the world where it's the opposite. But you're right. Like I when oh, please wonder before the first season ever came out, I distinctly remember being somewhere online, maybe it was on Netflix itself, I don't know, and seeing the poster saying this new show called Stranger Things is coming soon to Netflix. It's coming in like five months, whatever. And the poster was a classic hand-drawn Drew Struzan looking poster. And I got so excited. I was like, I have no idea what this show is, but I'm already like waiting in front of my TV for it to start. And I remember telling people like, oh my God, there's this like really crazy looking 80s adventure show coming out. And everybody's like, whatever. And then the show comes out and the whole world's talking about it. So (laughs) you're right. If they lose that retro appeal, what is the show then, but just a sci-fi about some scary, but bland monsters in a portal. So that's why I'm really hesitant to say that I'd get excited for any kind of spinoffs or world building because just the world as it is, I like it in this story. I don't know if I necessarily like it in others. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, completely agree with you on that. As much as I like this, I don't know if I'd like it beyond this. I don't know. My first time being exposed to Stranger Things was the first trailer for it. I was uh, on. I was playing soccer, and it was like a half hour, hour before I had to leave. And I put on IMDb, and this trailer for this thing called Stranger Things came up. And I was like, oh, what's this? And then I put it on, and I watched it, and I was like, oh, okay. And it came out a few months later, and, and I like it, and I watched it all. Uh, I think I watched the first season twice, which is, for me, that's impressive. But anyway, Andrew, we're going to wrap it up. Anything else you want to say? Are you sad that the Tarantino Star Trek is dead? <laughs> no, because I feel like it was dead the moment it got announced. Uh, and I think that's far for the course with lots of Tarantino yeah. stuff. He, he just kind of says things, you know, he'll wake up tomorrow and do a press conference and be like, hey, uh, I think I'm going to make a Wonder Woman movie, guys. I, I don't know. And then uh, in, in like four months, I'll be like, I'm not making a Wonder Woman movie. That's crazy. Though. So. I, I actually, the, the Tarantino Star Trek thing was funny because I think like a month or a few weeks before it was announced, I listened to a podcast, which was like a year or two old at this point. And he talked about Star Wars and Star Trek. And they asked him and he goes, oh, I'm more into Star Trek. 
but he's like, I like the original series of Star Trek. And he went on to it. And then he talked about the J.J. Abrams ones. And he goes, the good, and this, he did this before the third movie came out. So he talked about the first one and he loved the first one. Then he talked about the second one. Have you heard this podcast? You should, I'll send you the link if you haven't. But he talks about what he got, what they did wrong in the second Star Trek movie. And it makes so much sense. And he talked about what he loved about it. And, and then, and then he, and then people are like, he's going to do it. And I was like, what? No, I listened to that podcast. It's old and he's not making it. And then he actually said he was doing it. And Variety today, Andrew, just put out an article uh, with the, I don't remember the actor's name, but it was a writer's name that he was writing it with. And they got together for meetings and stuff. And apparently it was, his script was uh, a take on the 18th episode, I believe, of the original Star Trek show. And it's going to be like 1920 or 30s Gangster Earth, but it might have been like another planet. And they used to just get together and watch gangster movies and just talk about Star Trek. And then it just kind of died. <laughs> That's funny. And you know what? I, I only know the name of one episode from the originals, and it's that one. So that's really funny. That, that's the one he picked. Uh, Disney does he's saying that she thinks Stranger Things suffers from binge watching on like Disney Plus. I think about those shows day in and day out for weeks with Netflix. I watch them one sitting and forget about it. Exactly. Disney exactly that's what happened yeah. to me with with Cobra Kai season three. And I love that show, but I it was totally my fault. I binged when I shouldn't have. Um, and my kids were like, I learned binging from watching you, Dad. And now they're horrible monsters and I've disowned <laughs> them. So I, I'd rather go the Disney Plus route myself. I, so I hate binging, as you know. I've brought this up many a time. I cannot stand binging. I two episode max kind of guy. But I've read articles that that model for Netflix is is not doing them any favors right now. It's hurting them apparently, and that could be why they're splitting up Stranger Things into two sections. They're not going to drop their model of all at once. They want you to. But the thing I can't stand, Andrew, is on May when they drop the first half of season four. You're going to watch it. Brock's going to watch it. And I'm going to be waiting around. It's going to take me two months to finish all four or five episodes. And you guys are going to be done. And we, the problem is we can't talk about it. Whereas Disney Plus drops it and Apple does this and Prime, I think, does this. They drop it weekly. All of a sudden, both, you know, I might not watch it the same time as you, but I'm watching it that day most likely. And then we could talk about it. And we have a week to talk about this thing. And yeah, and, and Stranger Things, you know, last the last season dropped, I wasn't around i think i was on vacation or something when it dropped brock watched it all i was gone he's like did you see it i'm like no we can't talk about it by the time i finally caught up and talked about it he was like i don't even remember he was like yeah, I, I, yeah things happened i don't know so i think disney does he has a point there um whether or not netflix cares i doubt it because we're still getting our 17 dollars a month they're still <laughs> swimming in all our money right you're right they don't have the most important thing with shows like this is they don't have the water cooler appeal yeah. Something like Lost had the water cooler appeal. People talked about it all week and asked questions and spat theories at one another. And you can't do that with this because it's like, hey, hey, Gail, what do you think is going to happen at the end of in the finale of Stranger Things? And Gail's like, well, don't ask me because I've only watched two episodes. So you can't get that same conversation going with something like this. It's uh, It's expecting everybody to be on the same page. And even though bajillions of people have netflix they're rarely ever synchronized in their binging no absolutely and i'm i'm the worst at it there are shows that i i love and it takes me forever to to i like i love the witcher a lot i like that show a lot um and it, it took me i think two weeks to watch it the last season because i'm just i'm not i'm just like i watch an episode today maybe tomorrow maybe i'll wait two days yeah, that's just how i am i'm not if it's a, if it's a movie, it's different. But if you put it episodic, I once you give me a break, you give me an out, I'm out. Mm -hmm.